Hello and welcome to Derp Shield. This is a Tekka tutorial for atomic science and power generation in the latest build of Tekka 1.2.6b. All right, to start out, you're going to need to have some amount of electromagnetic glass, e electromagnets, an, a fission reactor, a chemical extractor, one aqueous accumulator, some flue ducts, and some redstone energy conduits. I will uh be posting the amount that I use throughout the video. So here we go. First you need to start off with your fusion reactor. Then on each side you put an electromag uh, electromagnet. Then you fill in the gaps with electromagnetic glass. Alright, so that's the base of it. Now over here you need to add four more electromagnetic glass to each area. Uh, hold on. That needs to be down one. There we go. The reason why it needs to be down one is because the plasma from the fusion reactor will always generate one away in the cardinal directions and you don't want to have plasma just free flowing because it will destroy everything but electromagnetic glass, electromagnets, and bedrock which can be a bit frustrating if uh, you have anything nearby that you would like to keep. Alright, so that's how it should look right now, except for that. The next step up is filling in this area. Next level up with electromagnetic glass. Alright, you can get rid of the outer corner pieces because they are not necessary. I'm just doing that because I'm lazy and didn't want to switch between materials. Alright. And get rid of that piece because it's not necessary as well. That looks right. Alright, now you want to grab electromagnets and cover the little channels that we just made. Alright, so this is how it should look. This is essentially the entire reactor finished. Um, then you want to add redstone conduits out of the top of the reactor, then turbines right there. Now you want to put water. You only need the one bucket. I'm just doing four so it becomes nicer looking. It doesn't have the flowing water sound. And you want to put glass in all four of those corners. Now you just connect this and there you go. That's that part of the reactor. Now we need to make the next part of the reactor which is the outer layer for the water to run through. And I'm just using glass because it's nice to see that everything is going well inside. Alright. Now, at the uh, intersections between the T's, you want to have a glass down below. And then you want to put water in all of those T's. So now that you have water flowing over all the electromagnets. Then you want to have turbines over all of the electromagnets. are on the second level. Now 
Now you may be wondering why did we make nuclear reactors if we're going to have steam turbines? Well, the electric turbines. It's because the generate the fusion reactor act doesn't actually produce power. It takes power away, which seems counterintuitive, but the electromagnets get heated from the plasma, which then in turn heat the water, which produces steams, which turns these electric turbines. And each turbine in the default settings for Tekkit currently produce around 3,000-ish RF per tick, which is a lot, and since energy conduits can only hold 10,000 per tick, we're going to have five different outputs not connect them all together because that would cause the power to overflow and waste some of it. Alright, now to make this a self-sustaining um, reactor, you just take one side, pop it down, Now just because I didn't plan for this, we're going to use glass. Grab your chemical extractor. Put it there. Then you take your aqueous accumulator. Have a bucket of water near it. You can take your fluid duct. And add a servo to it. Nor, why aren't you generating water? Oh, because I put the water on the wrong side. Let's just make this easy on ourselves. And add water to every side. There we go, now water's flowing through. And you need to have more fluid ducts leading from the chemical extractor to the bottom, or really any side, of the fusion reactor. Then you need to take another servo, add it in, make sure that uh, redstone signal is ignored because then it will just automatically pump out at any given time. Make sure that it is set to pull from by uh, using a wrench on it. Now we need to kickstart this entire thing. So I'm just going to grab a creative energy cell, have it do that, and it's going to once it makes one deuterium, we'll take this away. Alright. One deuterium has been made. We go over to here. You see that it has 100 liters of deuterium. Now we go over to here. Kickstart the entire thing. See it has power going. And these turbines right here should now be producing enough power to uh, keep this thing going indefinitely and these turbines will provide power to that to have it make deuterium indefinitely as well. Now just to show you how efficient this design is, at least in the current build of Tekkit, I'm just going to stick down uh, resonant energy cells at every single area and then grab a multimeter which measures the throughput 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, and 7,000. So one will always be producing slightly less. That one will uh, alternate between the two, between one of the five areas, because the plasma down below won't stay constantly filled. It will uh, flux around and unless it's heating the electromagnets, uh, it won't be creating steam, and then one of the turbines will not be spinning. But they'll all spin, it's just 
there will be a couple that aren't spinning at any given time, which will decrease the power output slightly, but it shouldn't matter because it's producing approximately 50,000 RF per tick and it's self-sustaining. Anyway, that's all I have for this uh, quick uh, episode for how to make an atomic sciences fusion reactor and have it be self-sustaining. Thanks, bye-bye.